we're going to talk about now is simply uh, intubating a cerebral hemorrhage patient. So really, really dangerous or cerebral herniation patient or any type of ice increased intracranial pressure patient. Uh, very, very dangerous types of situations that they're in, obviously. And so I want to talk to you about some of the certain things that we're going to do in order to protect them uh, as we try and intubate them if that's needed. So the big thing that I have up here is that we're going to maintain a map of 90 or a systolic of 110. Now, the reason that we're going to do this is quite simple because of the, the very, very simple math that we have is that we have a intracerebral herniation or an increased intracranial pressure. So that is actually calculated uh, through our, our very quick math problems. We have a map, okay, mean arterial pressure here. Then we have minus the ICP, which is the intracerebral pressure. Okay, is going to give us our continuous flow of cerebral perfusion pressure, okay, CPP. And CPP is what we need in order to maintain vital functions, get blood, get oxygen, get fluid, and sugars to the brain in order to maintain its functions. And CPP should stay around or above 60. Okay, that is very, very key. If anything below 60, we would consider hypoperfused uh, in a brain itself. Okay, so that's what we're trying to maintain in the brain itself is a CPP of 60. Now, why is this maintenance of a 90 systolic or 90 MAP very, very important in order to keep this patient from getting any worse? Well, when we have an intracerebral pressure, we have a huge increase in that, which means that we're actually, if we don't increase our MAP, if we don't try and compensate with our MAP and we leave it like this, then our CPP is gonna go down. In fact, it's gonna go way, way down. And we're gonna be in a very hypoperfused state in the brain. And the brain does not manage that very well. It doesn't have a whole lot of oxygen and sugar reserves at all. In fact, it has very, very few. And so when we have a significant decrease in CPP for any length of time, we actually have cell death or brain tissue death uh, because of that decrease in CPP, all because of that ICP. So our brain, our body recognizes this increase in ICP. And so when we see massive amounts of MAP or massive amounts of hypertension in these patients, it's actually a compensating factor to maintain some sort of cerebral perfusion pressure that's higher than 60 because of that increase in ICP. That is the danger of what's going on here. So when it comes back to our question, maintaining a MAP of 90 or systolic of 110 is simply very, very vital when we come to intubating these cerebral herniation patients because we don't want to knock out any of this MAP at all, okay? So one thing that we want to take in consideration, I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of room here, okay? Um, actually, you know what? I want to leave that. I'm gonna leave those things because I think they'll come in handy in a second here. So when it comes to this kind of guy. So what we need to do, first off, we need to make sure that we get any type of secondary injuries going on. So for example, if our patient had a pelvic injury and they were losing blood within their pelvis and we are trying to maintain this map of 90, if we recognize that we have an unbound pelvis, we're gonna to wanna to correct that to maintain pressure within the body because we can't maintain a good map with other bleeds going on. So let's pelvic bind that, find any other injuries that could possibly be bleeding excessively and try and stop those bleeds. So again, we can keep as much blood as we can inside the body so we can maintain a good map. That's the first thing. Second thing, fluids can be beneficial in this particular situation um, in order to, uh, very, very small amounts of fluid, like 500 mils kind of idea, in order to again, maintain that map and anticipate a drop in blood pressure in these particular patients. That's what we're really doing is we're basically pre-intubating them by giving them, you know, treating injuries, giving a little bit of fluids, as well as setting up, set up your levo. Okay, don't leave this to the very end because again, we're maintaining, we wanna maintain that map, but we know when we intubate patients, we drop maps. We drop maps can sometimes considerably. In this particular patient, if we drop a map low and below the cerebral perfusion pressure that we need, we're actually creating a chance that this guy could, uh, the chance of this guy surviving uh, are much, much lower every time we drop that cerebral perfusion pressure. So we need to maintain that map. And so pre-fluids, set up a levo drip, have that ready to go, and maybe even some pressure, or pressors, so pocket pressors as well, again, to maintain that map as high as we can so that way our cerebral perfusion pressure does not suffer. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be doing in that particular case. Now, what are we gonna use for an induction agent? Well, the best thing that we're gonna do is probably use ketamine. 
okay? Ketamine is probably your best bet in this particular situation. Well, you might go, oh, wait, isn't it contraindicated in ICP? No, actually, all the studies have kind of debunked that whole idea that that's dangerous. In fact, we want to maintain good MAP. Uh, and so the only way we're going to do that is by using an induction agent like ketamine um, that's going to allow us for good intubation. Okay, good pre oxygenation is really, really important, but this whole talk is about how we're going to maintain that MAP through this whole cycle of intubating a cerebral hernia patient. Well, the first thing, the best thing you can do that's going to save this patient from having a decrease in their MAP is get them pre set okay pre or set them up in there kind of get pre fluids going get a levo drip set up so that way you're prepared for that drop and map that's going to occur during this intubation and use a non hypotensive drug or hypotensive potential drug like ketamine so that way we can maintain our map as high as we can during this intubation because we know we're going to lose some pressure let's give us ourselves the best chance give this patient the best chance they can by being prepared for that drop in map so that way we can maintain that cpp above 60 that we need in order to keep them alive